Hey guys, back for a car chat. Uh, today, I just felt it in my heart, my soul, my spirit to talk about money. Uh, the thing is, yeah, I love money. I love talking about money. I love making money. Money, money, money. Shh, money, money. But you know what? This came because I had a couple questions come up on one of my recent videos because I posted a video a few months ago about buying a house to flip, a $38,000 house in the country to flip, and then I recently posted a video uh, about buying a $41,000 townhouse, and that's all within a couple months, right? So apparently that's got people watching my money, right? They're like, oh my God, how much money do you have? Ooh. First of all, you don't know if I pay cash or not, if I finance, so you don't know, but I'll tell you, I did, I paid cash, cash money, if you wanna watch my money. But it brought up a very important thing that I always have preached, I've always said, you know, it's really hard to teach people about money finance, money management. It's a hard thing to do. I've mentored over the years in trying to teach people that are around poor money management, poor relationships with money. It's very hard to teach that, right? It's like, how, how do you teach that? Just through action, through example? Like, but other than that, how can you reinforce it? Think about it, it's very hard, it's difficult. It's a difficult lesson to teach because there's so many different ways to make money, get money, save money, multiply money, compound money. So it's hard to do. But uh, trust me, I've thought about this a lot in life, right? Through the different mentorship programs that I've taken part of and just because I'm passionate about the subject. Um, but my first lesson that I've always came up with, like, it's, it's not like invest in X, invest in Y, invest in Z, do this by age 25, save this by age 30, you can retire by age 50. It's none of that, right? Because all that stuff is so specific to your life, your situation, your wants, your needs, your passions, your purposes in life, which is all so individualized. But there is one thing that I always come back to that I'm always reminded of whenever people are asking about money, money management, what to do, advice, all of this. But more so it comes up whenever people talk about other people's money, right? Which is a really common thing. Everybody's focused on everybody else's money. Everybody's focused on what everybody else has. Oh my God, they're Instagram. They have this many followers. Oh my God, they're money. They have a house and they have this and then they bought that. Did you see they got that toy? Oh my God, they must make this much money. They must have a lot of money. I can tell you one thing for sure about your money and your life is that there's an opportunity cost to everything. And the more time you spend looking at, contemplating, figuring out, calculating, worrying about, spending any type of time or energy on what somebody else has, the opportunity cost to that is that you're not spending it on your own, which is my numero uno biggest, baddest, best, baddest tip I can ever give. Don't focus on somebody else's money, their life, what they have, what they don't have, because that takes time away from you focusing on what you do have, what you do want, what your wants and dreams and ambitions are. Like I'm all about, of course, following people, listening to people on YouTube, finding mentors out there, strangers that are mentors, right? books, authors that are mentors, to figure out ways that you want to live your life in a way that's congruent with who you are and how you want to be and what makes you happy and fulfilled. But when we get so caught up and enamored with the norm and the mainstream and the narratives and the false narratives and what people are portraying and what picture they're painting, it becomes harder for us to spend time on painting our own. We get so infiltrated with every what everybody else is doing that it starts to clog our mind and second guess our intuition, make our intuition second guess rather, what it is that we want, what we desire, because they make it look so good, maybe I want that, or ooh, you know, white picket fence, that's what I've been fed since I was two. I should probably do that even though inside my gut is telling me something different. No, no, no. Sit back, get in touch with yourself, what you're doing, how you're doing it, when you're doing it, why you're doing it, what you want, how you can get there, a plan, a dream, stair steps, not just not just dreams, but dreaming and intuition type stuff. Like, focus on that, right? Because sometimes you just watch too much, we consume too much, and we get too caught up in other people's lives. It's none of your business, right? 
you want me to tell you what their name is, who you keep watching? I know who you're watching. I know who you're watching out there and who you're getting too caught up with. I can tell you their name. I'm psychic like that. Their name is Nanya. First name Nanya, last name Business. Nanya Business. <laughs> because you just need to mind your own business. You will start making more money when you spend time thinking about your money and how you can make it, how you want it, and changing your relationship with money. Instead of thinking about, no, money isn't what I have. People from where I come from don't have that. People from where I come from, people that do what I do, they don't make good money. Oh no, you gotta do this and this and this, and you gotta be on social media to make good money, and you've gotta work in a corporation to make good money, and you've gotta have parents from, you know, whatever line of blood to make money. <laughs> No, you don't. America is crazy. There's so much opportunity and money. They make it. They print it. It's everywhere. Go get it. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you. I get so overwhelmed. When I sit and think about money, I, me and money, we have a very good relationship. I have fostered and spent so much time feeding into my relationship with money because it's a relationship like any other relationship in life. You have to spend time on it. You have to think of what you can do better, what your money can do better, both sides, right? This is like, this is a combined effort. This is a relationship with money. So me and money have established a very firmly founded, uh, strong foundational relationship over the years and when I sit and think about money and opportunity with money, I'm never at a loss. Like my mind just goes bananas. I'm like, oh my God, this and this and this. I get, I don't get overwhelmed with defeat. I get overwhelmed with opportunity. Like there's so many different opportunities, so many things I wanna do. Oh my God, I wanna to live to be 150 because there's so much to do and so much money to make. And I love doing it and I love the journey. I don't just get tied to the outcome. Like I just love it and I just I don't just hoard it because I'm like in lack mentality. I think there's so much, I keep spending it and I reinvest it. I don't spend, I invest. I spend a little, a very, very little. I'm not caught up in corporate consumerism and what the mainstream narrative is pushing on how you need to buy this and you need to do this and you need to get a 30-year mortgage and you need to buy a bank. Can you hear how passionate I am about this topic? Focus on your money. <laughs> firmly, firmly found your, your relationship with money. Work on your relationship with money because she's amazing. Like, you know what? People that say money can't buy you happiness, we're probably broke, the people who said that, first of all. Second of all, okay, I can, you know, I'm open-minded enough to say, okay, money can't buy you happiness, but it's a damn good down payment. But don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing, how much money they're making, what they're investing in, how many homes they have, how many investments, what their portfolio looks like. The only reason you should be invested in that if it's some type of productive, constructive inquiry so you can pick their brain. But if you wanna find somebody who's doing better than you, so you can use what they've learned to help you leverage what you have and scale up, there you go. There's a good use of focusing on somebody else and what they have and don't have. But that's a deeper level of inquiry, right? That's not just that, oh my God, how much cash you got in the bank? Did you pay cash for these? Oh my God, oh my God, count people's money. Don't watch other people's pockets because you know what happens when you watch other people's pockets the pickpocketer comes to you and steals it out of your own. Not only that, but if you're one of these people that thinks it's gonna come to you, somebody's gonna give it to you, all of this, money, money is energy. It doesn't work like that. You may have some type of situation where something gets gifted, God bless you. However, it's energy. <laughs> you have to establish a relationship with it. And if you're one of those people that's in the victim mentality of, no, 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 it's only the one person, it's only these people from these states and this class and this bloodline and this whatever, this race, this this last name, this works at Amazon, works at this. No, 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 I'm here to tell you you're wrong because <laughs> there are so many people out there making good money, especially nowadays. There's, the barriers to entry have been removed. The internet has done amazing things. Get out there, get to it. There's people doing more with less every day. Not only that, but if you think that taking, you know, the top whatever percent of America's money and redistributing it is going to help anyone, you have not thought it through. You've taken some type of false narrative, 
you've ate it like a baby bird eats regurgitated food and you haven't thought about it because there is something really serious behind that mentality. And it is, guess what? If you take all the, let's say, top 1% peoples, all the, the millionaires or whatever, billionaires, let's just say billionaires, whatever, you take their money and redistribute it, the thing that you did not think through in this process is, guess what? Give it five years, give it 10 years. Guess where that money is gonna be? Back to them because they figured it out. They figured it out. They have a good relationship with money. They understand money. They know how to work their money, earn their money, save their money, multiply their money, rinse, repeat. <coughs> Getting so passionate in my throat. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, if you redistribute wealth, guess what happens? The wealth are just the wealthy are gonna end up with it again five years from now because the same thing that happened before is gonna happen again. It, it, it's not gonna change anything. You may have a couple people that once they get that money, they learn something and they figure it out, but it's going to be a very slow grind, a very, very long learning curve, especially when it comes to money. That relationship does not change overnight. That is a long, long relationship to establish. So if you get, uh, just look at the stimulus money. You got people sitting at home. They're getting stimulus money and sitting at home. You know what the thing to do would have been if you really were trying to use that as a leg up and an opportunity? You would have said, oh my God, I'm making, I'm getting this free money. Now I'm gonna go out and work twice as hard to make twice as much money. So now I can three, four, five X and take a, take a step up in life. Like use this as an opportunity to go to the next level, right? And to like use this to advance. But then you have all these people. It's just it just shows if you were to redistribute wealth, what it would do. All it would do it was ha would have a temporary redistribution, and then like a freaking magnet, it just come back to the wealthy because they know how to work money instead of having money work them. They know what these BS things. They know TV's garbage. They know mainstream news and narratives and media are garbage. They. <laughs> They get it, they get it. They turn off the TV, they work hard. If it doesn't serve them, they don't give it time. And they know what their value is and they go out there and they do what it takes and they sacrifice and then they put themselves in a position to where they can live the life that they wanna live. So stop counting my money. Better yet, stop counting everybody else's. And I'm not saying that from like, I don't care if you count my money. But for your own sake, don't count my money because the opportunity cost is that's less time counting your money. Guess what? You counted your money, count it again. Just sit with it. Sit in a closet. Count it. Feel it. Put it on your body. Rub it over you. I don't care. Do what you have to do. Whatever your love language is so you can establish that relationship with that money because I tell you, I spent many, a, many a hours counting pennies when I was little, counting money. I used to even pretend that leaves off a tree were money. I put them in my closet and I'd save them. Like they were money. Like this is literally, this is, I fostered this relationship. I got a money counting machine when I was young, young. I got a, uh, accounts at banks when I was young, CDs when I was young, stocks when I was young. We've been working on this relationship for a long time. It's like, you know what? All those different investment tools, to me, that's like, that's like, how do I want to put that? That's like uh, some type of like physical touch or something. That's a love language. That's like a new, that's a new position. I'm trying a new position with my money, you know what I'm saying? And guess what? You got to spice up that relationship to keep growing it because usually relationships are advanced through experience and seeing someone or something, your money, through a different lens in a different way. So go out there and try new positions with your money. I hope that helps. Hopefully that's the analogy that just makes it click for you today. Don't count your money, because the opportunity cost is you're not counting your own. Go count your money, sit in the closet, count it, lay on it, do what you gotta do. You, what is that Scrooge McDuck or whatever, the McDuck diving through his money? You know why he had that money? Look at the relationship he had with that money. He was diving in it, he was swimming in it, he was loving it, he was enjoying it. Go enjoy it. Figure out your relationship with your money. I guarantee there's so much out there for you. You're so capable of making all you ever wanted to make and more. You just gotta figure out the who, what, when, where, why, how.
and reestablish that relationship. Love you, bye.